take off, take flight with you. Yeah, for we never fly, but we're flying. Hi, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Take Flight Podcast. This is episode number 162, and it's part of our solo takeaway episode. This week's episode will be hosted by myself, Olu Okinola. In this week's episode, I want to take our listeners on a journey from beginners to being able to invest in the stock market using a stock and shares ISA account. All you need is internet connection and a few minutes. Nothing to be afraid of. Now, before we get started, I just want to say this podcast is for information purposes only. Matters discussed are not intended to provide or should be relied on for investment, accounting, legal, tax advice, or any recommendations. The views are just my own opinion, a random guy on YouTube. If you are willing to implement anything discussed, please do your own independent research and speak to a financial advisor. Let's get started. At the time of recording this episode, December 2022, the stock market has been declining. For example, the S&P 500 is down 17% year to date. At one point, it was even down 25% during this year, right? There's no way to hide any asset. You can look at bonds, um, the FTSE 100, real estate has been in a, a decline in 2022. Now, if I'm honest, this is the most excited I've been to invest in the market, especially because I like to invest for long term, right? So five, 10 years. And I feel like this is a great opportunity to pick up great companies at a discount. So firstly, why should you invest, right? The answer is because saving is just not enough. Now, whenever you receive money, you really have three options. You can either spend it, you can either save it or invest it. Now, saving is important, right? But it's only part of the story. A smart saver will make sure that it has sufficient emergency funds and also any big purchases that they're going to make over a short period of time that they've saved for. Now, the risk here is inflation. The longer you hold your money in cash, the lower your purchasing power is due to inflation. So what this means is, let's take, for example, purchasing a property, right? It's more expensive to purchase a property now than it was five, 10 years ago. So that means your money, you're going to need more money to be able to purchase what you would have been able to purchase maybe five, 10 years ago. Now, the best way to offset this, right, is investing. Now, investing matters because investing is effectively getting your money to work for you, right? Building wealth. Now, smart investing, again, capital growth is not always guaranteed when investing, but smart investing will allow you to outpace inflation and grow your wealth. So now that we've covered why you should invest, let's move forward. Now, you can invest in multiple things, but for the purpose of this episode, we're going to talk about stocks. Now, stocks are a great way to invest because you're able to create a diversified portfolio, right, of quality businesses in multiple different industries. Now, on the screen, I'm going to show a chart. This shows different asset classes from small cap stocks to US Treasury bills. So if you look at the chart, right, for example, small cap stocks has been able to generate 12.2% annualized return. Now, that's outpaced inflation. This is not a guaranteed return. But over the last five decades, if you analyze that return, right, you're seeing around 12.2%. Not bad, especially when inflation has been around 4%. When investing, you want to think about a few things, right? Everyone that wants to invest wants to grow their money. You want your capital to increase. But the second thing you got to consider is if you do make any profits is taxes, right? Everyone's got to pay taxes. But wait, what if I told you there was a way to not pay income or capital gain taxes, right? That's where the stocks and shares ISA come in. And ISA is basically... Uh, tax wrapper, right? You're able to put money into this ISA account and it means you're exempt. So you don't have to, you're sheltered away from having to pay any tax income or capital gain income, right? At the time of recording this in 2022, 
the stocks and share ISA allowance, so the amount that you can uh, put into this account over a year period is 20,000. So you can put money into this stocks and shares ISA, right? And you're able to invest in shares, funds, investment trusts, bonds, and any profit that you make or any income that you make from this account is exempt from any taxes. That sounds fantastic, right? I don't know any reason why you wouldn't want to create a stocks and shares ISA instead of putting your money into a broker account where if you do make any profit, you're liable to pay taxes on your profit. Signing up to a stocks and shares ISA is very easy. First thing you need to do is go on Google. You type in stocks and shares ISA UK and you'll come up with multiple options from Vanguard, Trading 212, Free Trade. Now, so when selecting a platform, the two things you want to look at is the cost. Yep. So the cost to use the platform, right? So for example, you've got Vanguard, which I believe charges you around 0.15% to invest, which is really low. Um, I personally use Trading 212. Um, that is a zero commission based platform. So you don't pay anything to invest um, or purchase stocks. Um, apart from if it's in a different currency. So you have to pay, I believe it's around 0.15% for them transferring um, things to other currencies in terms of your investment. The second thing you want to look at when selecting a platform is what available assets or stocks can you purchase or funds can you purchase, right? You want to make sure that the platform that you're selecting has a wide range of different assets, businesses, indexes, funds in which you can invest into. So those are the two things I look at when selecting which platform I was going to use. Now that we've discussed why investing is important, we've talked about the benefits of using the stocks and shares ISA account. We've talked about how easy it is to open a stocks and shares ISA account. Go into Google, type in stocks and share ISA UK, select which platform you want to use based on having a wide range of stocks and funds that you can invest in. Next, you want to decide how much you want to invest. Now, starting off, the way to think about this is how much are you able to sacrifice each month that you can invest for the next five to 10 years? Even if that's a hundred pounds, right? Start today. The next thing to do is ask yourself, how much do you want, right? If that's half a million, if that's a million. If you wanted a million, so myself, I want a million, right? Of assets or stocks, liquid assets in my stock account, shares and ISA account. The way to do that, right, is really if I was to put 500 pounds each month, assuming, again, this is an assumption, an annualized return of around 10%. Again, when investing, your growth is not guaranteed, right? There's risk when it comes to if you're going to see up to 10%. But the chart that I showed before where it showed the uh, small cap stocks, where it showed the analyzed return was over the last five decades was around 12.2, right? Um, so if I was to invest in something a little bit more safe, like the S&P 500 or a very diversified index fund, right? And I was to get seven to 10% return there, it would take me 30 years to gain 1 million. Now, the first thing you're probably thinking is 30 years is a long time. Okay, if 30 years is a long time, there's really only two variables that you can play around with. Either you invest or I invest more than 500 pounds each month, or I look at ways to generate higher than 10% return. Now, I'm not an expert in picking stocks, right? You're probably not an expert in picking stocks. You probably got your full-time nine to five job, looking after your family, all these different things, right? So it's very unrealistic to think that you're going to be able to now come up with a way of making 20, 30, 40% return annualized. So the realistic thing is figuring out more ways to make more money to be able to increase that 500 pounds to maybe a thousand pounds a month or a thousand five hundred a month, right? That would be how I would think about deciding how much to invest. Like I said, start today. Even if it is as little as a hundred pounds each month, get into the habit of investing, putting money away each month for five, 10 years, then work backwards and ask yourself, how much do you want? And then play with those variables. So either you're able to gain a higher return, which is hard, 
or you're able to save more money, which is also difficult, but it's more your control, save more money and invest more than 500 pounds a month to reduce that year period. So in the example that I gave 30 years um, to be able to generate 1 million. Now that we've covered those points, you're probably thinking, what should I invest in? Now, I can't give you specific advice, but I can talk about what fundamentally I look at. Instead of trying to pick one stock that's going to go to the moon, right? Like I said before, I'm not an expert in picking stocks. You're probably not an expert. You've probably got a nine to five job, multiple other things to worry about and think about. And you don't have the time to analyze different companies. You don't have information about all these different industries and businesses. You don't have time to listen to all their annual um, reports. So instead of picking one company, it's better to invest in an index fund. Now, this is basically the saying, it's better not to keep all your eggs in one basket, right? So by picking an index, for example, the S&P 500, which is um, 500 of the top companies in the US, you're able to minimize your risk and just follow an index of the 500 greatest company. On the screen, I'm going to show you what's happened to the S&P 500 since 1928. And basically, by investing in these companies, you don't need to do the homework of going back, looking at all the different businesses, all the annual reports. You're basically just saying that you believe companies in the next 5, 10, 20 years are going to be better within that index or industry that you're looking to pick. So if you believe in electric cars, right, there's indexes and funds related to electric cars. If you believe in the healthcare, right? There's funds associated or funds related to healthcare that you can also invest in. So start simple. Instead of trying to find individual stocks, look at indexes, something like the S&P 500. Do your research on it. Look at how it's grown over the last 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And look at selecting a diversified amount of companies where you can invest in. You don't have to worry about it and you can leave it there for 5, 10 years. And you can see the growth as it compounds and companies and businesses become better over time. So we got to the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. Now, I think we've covered quite a lot from why you should invest, how to invest. So using the stocks and shares ISA account, how much to invest, and lastly, what to invest in. So hope you've enjoyed this takeaway episode. If you found this information helpful, please follow us on Take Flight Podcast. And you can follow myself, Olu Okanola, on YouTube or Instagram. Take care and take flight. Take off, take flight with you. Yeah. Fool, we never fly, but